Who is the most overrated team in the NFL? We want you guys to comment below. So if you're watching this video on YouTube, if you're watching this video on Facebook, comment below. Who is the most overrated team in the NFL? Tom, who you got? Well, based on where we're after three weeks, I'm going to go with the Cowboys because I thought they were really good. Turns out they're pretty mediocre. They're bad right now. Well, you guys Look are at watching. self-inflicted <laughs> wound. <laughs> You're watching NFL Daily. I'm Mitchell Renz. That's Tom Downey. Let's get into the latest NFL news and rumors. Tom, you said the Cowboys are one of the most overrated teams because, well, they just lost to the New York Jets. But, hey. The New York Jets is the first team we're the talking about The riot is still here. on, by the way, Cowboys fans. <laughs> the riot is still on. Hey, I was enjoying myself heavily last night in Dallas. So <clears> the <throat> Jets, fire sale, is it coming? This was the report out of New York, one of the local publications, that said the Jets are still looking to sell, which I still think makes sense. Uh, the exact stat was one team since 1990, when the playoffs expanded, have started the year 0-4 and made the playoffs. The Chargers in 1992. The odds of it happening are pretty much nothing. Also make note, GM Joe Douglas did not build this roster, so we'll see how things go the next couple games. But I think it makes some sense to explore some trades. My problem with this report was, that from SNY, were the names that they mentioned because they were curious at best. So the interesting thing I would say here, Tom, is last year the Colts, they were 1-5 and five and they made the playoffs. That's all I'm saying. So the it, potential... Are the Jets... The, <laughs> The Colts. <laughs> no, uh, they are definitely not. But hey, maybe Sam Darnold just announced his retirement mm -hmm. at random time next year. So Leonard Williams, Coletio Assembly, Tremaine Johnson, and Le'Veon Bell. One of those names. is not like the other. Um, Leonard Williams? No, it's Le'Veon Bell. Why? <laughs> because you're going to trade away the guy you just signed? Like, I get you, tra you traded for for, for, for yeah, So you just, you just got Tremaine Johnson? That was a couple years ago. And Tremaine Johnson, got, years ago. Tremaine Johnson got benched. You just got Coletio Assembly in a yeah, trade. in a trade. It's not like you made Le'Veon Bell one of the highest paid backs in the NFL. I know that Adam Gaze didn't want to pay him all that money. Maybe Joe Douglas agrees. But if you get rid of Bell, that offense takes a pretty big step back, which also would help if you want to tank. Leonard Williams, I think, makes sense. The rest of those names, Assembly's still kind of expensive. I actually think expensive. Leonard Williams is the most valuable piece on that in that entire screen right yes, there. Yes, because a lot of Lev Bell's guaranteed money kicks in next year, so I think that's a fair point. No one wants Tremaine Johnson. That is how much money is left. $35, $38 million left on his deal. Lev Bell I'm intrigued by, but I feel like you're just paying money to get a mid-round pick. That doesn't make no a lot bueno, of sense. No bueno, Tom. No bueno. Let's go now to the Bengals. Tyler Eifert, a tight end that I drafted in 2015 fantasy football, hasn't been really anything ever since. So He's always hurt. Yeah, I know. I understand that. So, tell me what's going on here. Is he going to get traded? There was a report, and a couple of them, frankly, and they're of iffy credibility at best that the Patriots and the Saints both want to have, which, I, which, which from common sense perspective... It seems it, fun. It does. It also makes sense, right? Like, those teams need a tight end. Jericho kind of, kind of been disappointing. New England has Ryan Izzo right now as a starting tight end. More on the Patriots tight ends here in a little bit. The Bengals are terrible. Trading away someone like Tyler Eifert makes a lot of sense for them. They're probably not going to get much in terms of a compensatory draft pick for him if and when he leaves in free agency. And the talent is still there despite kind of... I don't know put this delicately... Middling production? <laughs> Somewhere oh. along that line? You're also on the Cincinnati Bengals, so I mean, like, yeah. what does it really matter? They don't have anyone to throw them the football to. Breaking news, Tom Brady, better than Andy Dalton. I'll say it right here on NFL Daily. You heard it here first. But here's the Patriots tight end depth chart. Mm. <laughs> Ryan Izzo is the number one right now. They actually just brought back Ben Watson, who they signed when he was brought him out of retirement, signed him. Cut him when he was going to come back after his suspension and then brought him back again because Matt Lacoste has a sprained MCL. He's going to miss at least a couple of weeks there. It's an interesting idea for really both sides there. Eifert, I think, would be a buy low option at tight end in just in terms of draft pick and maybe even upside too. I'll tell you what. Tyler Eifert, Ben Watson, I think both those guys at this point need life alert. Let's go to O.J. Howard, a tight end that I absolutely flip and love. Could he get traded? I mean, I see my bolt down there. Free OJ. Dot, dot, dot. Clever. Yeah, I it, was, it was clever. I, I, I appreciate your little joke there. Uh, OJ Howard's best catch this year do it? was – No, OJ Howard. I already said Howard in there. You, you can't jump to that after I qualify it with Howard. It doesn't make any sense. I'm the host. I can do whatever I want. And find out works. OJ Howard's best catch this year came with the Tampa Bay Rays playoff game. That's how underutilized O.J. Howard has been this year. Say Tampa by, Bay Rays? Yeah, he was at the game. He one-handed and barehanded like a line drive. It was awesome. Huh, and the that. ball barely fit in his palm. It was so big. 
It's awesome play. But Howard, beyond a screen against the Panthers this this past week, hasn't been a factor in the passing game. And I get that you have you have Mike Evans, you have Chris Godwin. Godwin's been out of his year. mind. Like, but you got to utilize OJ Howard. He is a premier tight end athletically and has shown the flashes before. When he last year when he was healthy, he was great. Oh yeah. And the Bucks are like, no, we're not going to use him. It just it just doesn't make any sense. To I'm me. surprised too because Jameis Winston his entire yeah. career has shown two things: that one that he loves tight ends, and the other that he loves crap. That tells legs. me a screen. Eh, I don't know. All right, let's get, we got to get to 140k subscribers. We're right there. We're right so there. close. I see. I want to get there by next week. So next Monday. I want to get there by we're today. Today? Yeah, I can do it. Hey, if we get to 140k yeah. subscribers by the end of today, Tom's gonna shave his eyebrows. YouTube.com slash we'll, chat sports TV. We'll get to it by Friday. Watch. Friday? Okay. Yeah. Get us there by Friday. 140k I'll be, I'll be subscribers. Of subscribe, you subscribe, if we subscribe, don't. subscribe. If you are a subscriber and you want to retweet from Tom and I, take that link, youtube.com yes. slash chat sports TV, and tweet it out. And at what going downy and at Mitchell Rand three six five and if you can find this guy's Twitter handle Rob Gronkowski heck throw it in there because is Gronk returning to the NFL I can guarantee you this will probably be a segment on a future show. We do this like every other <laughs> week at this point. Look, they Have you just seen Gronk recently. He's like fifty pounds. He's lighter. thinner because of course he's thinner because he doesn't train the same way, doesn't eat the same way. Because why would you almost? Well, a good amount of players end up dropping weight once they retire from the NFL. I know that these Gronk, you know. Rumors, ideas aren't going to die because it's Gronk and it's the Patriots. The update, in quotes for you from <laughs> CBS Sports, is that Gronk has to apply before December 7th. Also, and this is the big one, that the remember how Gronk, it was, Kraft said Gronk never filed for yes. reinstatement? That's semantics, basically. Because he made the public statement and because the Patriots already put him on, on the list there, it doesn't actually matter. He announced it in an official ma manner. He just put him on the reserve retirement list. That acts as the exact same thing. And, I mean, there's no doubt that Rob Gronkowski would be the best tight end on this team. Actually, Tom, I, I thought about putting you on the Patriots tight end depth chart and say which one of these guys doesn't belong on here. Lacoste, I guess, kind of, sort and Lacoste, like, are they actually even NFL tight ends? I'm not quite sure. I like Ryan The Patriots, Izzo. though, they could definitely benefit from Gronk and – It'd be fun to see Gronk smash some uh, touchdowns in the end zone. Let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers, and are they the favorites? Let's talk about the San Francisco 49ers, and are they the favorites in the NFC? Because the Niners, they're the last undefeated team. They beat the Rams on the road. I'm excited for, for your public apology, Mitchell, coming up here in a little bit. They are, the, as you mentioned, the last undefeated team. And it's been impressive. A Rams game on the road with both their backup tight ends. I mean, look, you have the Dallas Cowboys on one hand, backup tackles at both positions. I might have missed Wilker just a second ago. They go on the road against a Rams team <laughs> versus a Jets team. The Cowboys lose. The Niners win 20-7. At this point, I don't think you can make any more excuses. The Niners are a legitimate NFL team. They are not just a legitimate playoff threat. They are a legitimate playoff contender and even Super Bowl threat. They're 5-0. and oh. The haven't played anybody stuff doesn't work anymore. I hear you, Tom. I mean, if there's been one guy who is, you know, I'll say uh, crapped on the 49ers more than anyone, it's me. And they looked very, very good this past week. So here are Super Bowl 54 odds from Bet DSI. The Patriots are still the favorite. It's who I put my money on. In fact, Patriots and Saints are the two teams that I have money on, and they're the top two. Then you got the Chiefs at plus 850, the 49ers at plus 1,100. The Packers, I'll still say I think the Packers are the favorite to win in the NFC. I will still Those say the Saints. that. Yes. Yeah, wow, that one. That's the, embarrassing. The, the one that you bet on to yeah. win the Super Bowl. I do. I did. I actually yeah. bet. I bet yeah. over 80 bucks on the Saints. So hopefully yeah. uh, they win the Super Bowl. And if you guys want to go bet on who's going to win Super Bowl 54, there's only one place to do it. It's at BetDSI. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NFL120 for 120% deposit bonus. I'll make you guys a deal. If one person from today's show goes to BetDSI, puts down promo code NFL120, and goes, but you got to go to the chatsports.com slash bet. And if you DM me, I will put down a $10 bet that the 49ers win the Super Bowl. Is that fair? I think yeah, that's that pretty seems fair. fair. So, Tom, let's look at the next five games yeah. for the 49ers. Look, the Niners right now, they sit, of course, at 5-0. and Mitch, they're going to have a couple more wins along the schedule. The people want to see it. I think it's time that you eat some crow. Well, I'll eat some crow, Tom, because uh, I asked you guys, will the 49ers win the NFC West? Last week, I said absolutely no idea. Here's the thing. 
The 49ers have looked really good. Y'all want me to eat crow? So guess what? I printed off a freaking it's picture kind, of a crow. It's kind of tough to tell. Picture of a crow. Uh, eat it. I just, I just want to just, you know, let the image speak for itself here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thirsty here. Uh, I can't do it. Can't do it. 49ers next five games. Oh, I'm all out. Sorry, Mitch. Oh, I can't do it. All right. Keep, keep chewing one. it. Keep chewing it. You're fine. Kyle Allen, let's go. <laughs> As Allen starting until he loses, I'll, you can see my note down there. Kyle Allen's better than Cam Newton right now. Don't, don't take that out. I, I see you taking that out of your mouth there. Anyway, Kyle Allen, you feel pretty smart about that because you were on board the Kyle Allen train of being he should start over Cam Newton. Yeah, I got to get rid of it, Tom. Okay. So, Panthers, they're 4-0 with Allen. And I've been saying it for a long time, as you noted. Like, you can go back three, four weeks. This is a better football team with Kyle Allen. I mean, look at these numbers. Mm -hmm. Seven touchdowns, zero interceptions, 901 yards this year. Cam wasn't putting the ball in the end zone. I can't wait to see what this team does. And even if the Panthers lose this week, I don't care. He needs to continue to start. I, I don't think there's any reason to rush Cam Newton back right now. Because, A, Cam Newton's not healthy. And Kyle Allen has been, a, at minimum, a great game manager. And when you have Christian McCaffrey, maybe you can justify only using a game manager there. So they're coming off wins over the Jags and the Bucks. They do go on the road. They're up next game. It's not till the 27th. They have a bye this week against San Francisco. You mentioned Christian McCaffrey, and he has been an absolute stud, especially if you've been playing him mm -hmm. on FanDuel. Humble brag here, I played Stefan Diggs, wet the beak a little nice, bit. Nice, there you go. I got 25 bucks this week nice on enough. FanDuel. Enough but here's the thing. You guys want to challenge Tom? You want to challenge me? You can challenge your friends. Go to FanDuel.com slash ChatSports. Hang on, hang on. Okay. ChatSports.com, wait, FanDuel.com slash ChatSports. You guys like fantasy football, you get injuries, they get banged up. Stefan Diggs hasn't been good all year, but he made me a lot of money. Do you, what do you, want to say? Do you know who I played in FanDuel this week? Who? DeAndre Hopkins. Because <laughs> the Chiefs can't cover anybody. Well. And look what happens. He does nothing. Hey, Deshaun Watson would have been a great play. Uh, That's right, buddy. Yeah. FanDuel.com slash chat sports. Challenge Tom, not me. Let's go talk about Lincoln Riley. Jerry Jones is intrigued by Riley. You know what, Lincoln Riley, I'm kind of intrigued by you too. I'll also make note, by the way, that A, Jerry's not in charge anymore. Like, he's just the figurehead. He's not actively making the decisions. Stephen Jones, though, is very much in charge and is very much the almost de facto owner at this point. He, he and Will McClay, Stephen on the money side, McClay on the personnel football side, make most of the decisions at, at the top end. Do you know who Stephen Jones' son is, Mitch? We've mentioned him a good half dozen to a dozen times in the office. I'm going to say no. It is John Stephen Jones, currently a quarterback at Arkansas, who was recruited to Oklahoma as a walk-on by one Lincoln Riley. Stephen Jones and Lincoln happened to get along when they met. They happen to be somewhat friends now. The groundwork is at least there. Now, I'm not going to, if you're a Sooners fan, I get it. Lincoln Riley doesn't have much of a reason to leave the Sooners. It is, such a fan it is such a fantastic job, but you're right. Jerry Jones, who does still have the money, can offer Lincoln Riley, how much do you want? Cool, here you go. I'll double it. There's no salary cap on coaches. I got all this oil money. I'm fine. <laughs> I did the thing with Zeke and then all of a sudden doubled one of my investments on the same day. It was awesome. And he also has shown he is willing to be patient. Okay. I think that's a big thing for Lincoln Riley. He's not going to take any job. The Cowboys job, though, I think would be a good job. So who should the Cowboys hire as their next head coach? Because everyone wants to fire Garrett, of course. Everyone wants to fire Garrett, which mm -hmm. uh, after losing to the Jets 24 to – and a game where, realistically, that game was not even close the entire time, and it's the Dallas Cowboys. They need to just straight up, you know, they need to figure something out. So who should the Cowboys hire as their next head coach? Comment below, Tom. What do Pete, you think? Pete, you're dead to me. Pete, you're dead to me. They put in Rex Ryan. <laughs> no, uh, I, I think Lincoln Riley. Sean is, Payton, that's fine. Which is which is a dead idea now because the Saints extended him and paid him a ton of money. He's not going to leave Nola right now. Lincoln Riley should be the number one name on that list. Might be able to hire Dan Quinn because he's probably going to have a job up here soon. Uh, and is nice he transition. on the hot seat? I think so, Tom. I don't know many seats that are hotter than these that I have to sit in because every time I get up after doing NFL Daily, I got something cooking down there. But Dan Quinn, his hot seat's red hot. Look, the, the report even before this coming game was that, hey, the, the, the Falcons have their bye in Week 9. They have the Cardinals, the Rams, and the Seahawks in between those games. Let's see how things go there because they don't want to 
make an in-season decision, but the thought process was, well, they can bounce back against Arizona. Now they're 2-4. and four. Can they steal one against the Rams or the Seahawks, both of those being at home? I think they're going to be underdogs in both of those games. They might be 1-7 and seven entering the bye. <laughs> I, look, at that point, I, you, you got to go. Yeah. I, I don't think this team is that bad. Imagine, it, it's mind-blowing to me, since that collapse in the Super Bowl, th these they were just in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. The Falcons were just a Super Bowl caliber team, mm -hmm. and now they're arguably one of the worst teams in the entire NFL. And as you alluded to, about to go to 1-7. Mm -hmm. So Dan Quinn... Guess what? Spoiler is going to be my vote here. Who will be the next head coach fired in 2019? The first was Jay Gruden. Second, I'm going to put my money on Dan Quinn. And Dan I think Quinn, it's no kind of hard to not put your money on Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn, If for it's sure. not with Dan Quinn or if you think it's going to be somebody else, let us know in the comments section. So if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, comment below who will be the next head coach fired in 2019.